Howdy folks, I'm Steve, K5HA, and welcome to Good Game Ham Radio and Outdoors. Today, we're taking a look at the Redivis RT5 handheld radio. Redivis was nice enough, they sent a couple of these out to me for the Padawans, told them I'd do a review for it. Um, there's probably several reviews out there for this thing, but just to be blunt, I had the opportunity to grab a couple for the Padawans, so I took them up on it. So let's kick it off. Alright, as we get started, hit that like button, hit subscribe, I appreciate it. If you want to help me support the Padawans, there are some links down below to do that. Patreon, um, Amazon affiliate links, stuff like that, the little tip jar. Any support to help me keep kids on the air is a good thing. And if you've got a radio that you're not using, I know a kid who can. So let's take a look at this thing. Alright, and this is it. box got a little damaged in shipping, but it is the typical... You know, Baofeng clone looking radio. This one's red, which is kind of cool. I don't have a red one. And sometimes the kiddos like those different colors. Comes with a wall wart and a charging base. Typical. Looks like your typical Feng antenna. It's got the SMA connector on there. Feels a little different than your normal fang though. We'll take it, we'll compare it to a bow fang here in a minute. And of course it's got the belt clip and we'll put that on here in a minute. So let's get this out of the way. Alright, so channel mode. Sounds kind of familiar if you ask me. Sounds like a bow fang. 145.225. Alright, so it is dual band. Let's, well, I'll leave that sticky on there for the kiddos. All right, so what have we got? We have the flashlight. Oops. We have this side button here, which at this point it activates the FM radio. The button labeled monitor turns on the flashlight. Two presses, it flashes it. Third press, it turns it off. Let me get this stuff out of the way. Okay, so here we have the VFO button. Channel mode. Okay, so frequency mode, channel mode. So these are already programmed in. It actually shipped. I have not charged this, and it shipped with what looks like a full battery. Your typical AB button to switch between your top and your sub band. Squelch. Oops. Confirm. Squelch. Alright, so menu button gets your squelch. Oops, did not mean to turn that on. Let's see, menu. Menu. All right, so menu button. Then I think we can just go, yep. So up and down. Turn the Roger beep. Oops, turn this so you can see it. There's the Roger beep. So yeah, this looks to be internally identical to a Baofeng UV5R. Here's your normal offset all that yeah all this stuff looks to be your standard issue stuff so what we're gonna do is we're gonna see if it walks like a duck and if it talks like a duck is it a duck we're gonna plug it in with the typical Baofeng cable we're gonna see what chirp identifies this thing as and we're gonna see how it does so let's check that part out okay one thing to note is it did not come with the programming cable, I have my own and officially unofficial, I'm sure, Baofeng, Bofung, however you choose to say it, whatever way floats your boat the best, I don't care, cable. So, let's see here if we can't get this thing plugged up. Okay, and we've got it plugged in. And remember with these, when you plug them in, you need to plug these in and make sure they see. So you're going to have to push it in, you'll feel it kind of click, and then you're going to push it more until it seats all the way and you can tell when you look down at it that it's seated there okay and I've already got it selected to be the Redivis RT5 and mine is on COM3 remember you'll want to make sure you're on the right COM port or you can do that by going to your device manager or if you're a Windows machine and if you're one of those Apple people I'm sure there's a way to do it somewhere ask Mike 
And we hit it, and we are downloading from the radio. And you can't see that little progress bar for. Oh, there it is down there. You can see that progress bar. Alrighty, and there's that screen. So, and the radio restarts. And what we're going to do to test this dude out real quick is we are going to let me get the keyboard out. We are going to change a couple of these. So, one forty-seven point three three. Oxford and that should be that now remember with chirp one of the nice things is you can change the other settings in here so if you click settings you can go through some of the basic settings like you know what you want the squelch level to be how long you want the battery to time out um, I want these with the name the display mode I like those to be the name I don't really care what color these are going to be because the Padawans, when they get these, are going to personalize these up to whatever they want. Um, advanced settings. I don't ever mess with the box on these things. Um, you can turn off the FM radio on here if you want to. I've actually done that on some of the Padawan radios because they're walking around the halls with it on. It's like old school power on message. So you can have it say... You know, whatever you want. Padawan's rule. And ch -ch 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 -ch, go from there. Work mode. Oh, setting. Okay, so. Let me go here. That's too long. We'll call it Padawan radio. That should work. Um, some of these other settings you can change, and this is your typical stuff you can do with the UV5R. You can change this to be whatever radio station it is you want. 100.5, I think, is a station around here. I don't know. I don't listen to it much. And all that other junk we're not going to mess with. So now that we've got that, I can go back to memories here, make sure I've got the memories I want. Like I said, they're putting them down there at the bottom, but that's no big deal. And we're just going to go radio, upload to radio. And you can see we have the green light flashing. Got the cloning bar going. And there it is, Padawan Radio. And it's up with those two things. So programming this thing, piece of cake. It's, like I said, guys, this is exactly like a, UV, like a UV5R. In fact, it pretty much is a UV5R. So speaking of UV5Rs, let's take one out and compare the two and see how similar they look. Okay, and so here we have a Baofeng UV5RA. I'll plug this. And this is the Redivis RT5 for size comparison purposes. It appears the Redivis radio is a little bit taller. Okay, um, I will tell you the Fang the official thing, I guess, is definitely thicker than the red of his radio. Um, so when you look at the keypad and stuff like that, everything appears to be laid out pretty much identically. Um, yeah, all of these are exactly the same. The only differences are physical size because the internals, I mean, you when we booted this thing up and plugged it in, it's just like a fang. So now let's see if we can get this thing on the air and see how it sounds. All right, so I'm going to switch to the Oxford machine. And in fact, I'm gonna text a buddy and see if he's, yeah, let's just shout it out and see what's going on here. K5ATA testing. All right, it does not appear I opened the machine. All right, so no, it is not opening the machine from there. Let me check and see what power level we're at here. Let me see if I can open Panola. K5ATA testing. 
Nope, I'm not opening either machine with that. So. Okay, so it wasn't able to open either machine. So my next solution was I was going to take out the, I'm sure it's a knockoff Nagoya 771 antenna. And you can see on a typical UV5R, this is raised up. And so the Nagoya antenna just screws down on here. and fits quite well but the red of this the SMA connector is actually recessed down and you can see the difference there if you look straight down and straight down you can see the top of the SMA connector coming out of the top of the official fang or whatever you want to call it but the red of this radio it's not and it's recessed down in there far enough that the the base of the Nagoya wannabe won't actually allow this SMA antenna to screw down into it so that sucks in a big way okay and you were able to see <laughs> when I keyed it up I left that in there on purpose the uh, interference it threw out of my camera that was not on my well initially I thought it was just jacking with my monitor but no it was in fact jacking with the camera itself um, I don't normally have that problem when I use a, a handy talk in here. So, and to demonstrate that, let's let's see if that's the case here as well. With the Fang. Channel mode. K5 ATA testing. And you can see I was able to key up the Fang and it didn't jack it up. So, not so sure what to think about that. Um, let me head out to the front porch and I'm going to see if I can just, maybe being outside, I can make a contact with this thing. But we'll have to take a look. All right, and so I had to kind of adapt this up to hook this up to the power meter. Let's see, got it set for 15. I want it set for power. And let's see if we can't see how much power this thing's actually putting out. Remember, this says it's an 8 watt transceiver. To kind of lean over it talk into it because my coax isn't quite long enough k5 ata testing and you can see with it hooked up to my external antenna i was able to open the repeater and you were able to and you were able to see that showed right about i would say six watts maybe let's try it again in fact, I'm going to go ahead and switch to, oops, let me get that tight. Let's try this again. You can see I'm on, because I'm on the lower scale, we're using this bottom scale right here. Right, well, you can't really, let me see if I can zoom that in a little better for you. There we go. Okay, so we're using those numbers right here. And for reference, I know that's a little blurry, but this is the five point right there. Where you see that one number right there? That's a five. K5 ATA testing. One, two, three. And that one showed to be about 10 or 12 watts. K5 ATA testing. So it appears to actually be putting out better than the eight watts. It looks like it's putting out nine, maybe 10 watts tip stand or normally so that's impressive which may be why it jacked with my camera so that's where we are with that so okay so what do I think about this it's a fang um, unlike a lot of the typical fang style radios that seem to be underpowered this one actually appears to be putting out what it's supposed to, maybe even a little bit better than. Um, this is, granted, this is an old meter, but it should still be fine. Um, by the way, Izzo, thanks for that. He sent that for the Padawans to learn, and it's coming, put, getting put to good use, so appreciate that, Izzo. Um, that, I'm, I'm guessing that putting out 8 to 10 watts or whatever is probably what's caused it to mess with my look-down camera. Whereas the Baofeng, which is probably not putting out that many watts 
did not. Um, I do kind of like the fact that it's you know more narrow or thinner than the typical UV5R. Um, the belt clip and everything, which I haven't put on there yet, but I kind of dig the red. It'd be even cooler if it were orange, because I'm an orange kind of fella, but I kind of dig the red. But with all those good things, this sucks. So, yeah, the fact that I can't put that other antenna on there, and that's going to make me wonder if I can put any aftermarket antennas on there. Because as we all know, these little rubber ducky antennas that come stock on these are not known for efficiency. So you're going to want to have a better antenna on this. And it doesn't appear I can do that with this. So I guess if you're using this, you know, someplace where you know you're going to be relatively close to all your repeaters and stuff, maybe. I was able to open the repeater with this antenna on it standing on my front porch and the repeater is probably i don't know 13 miles as the crow flies something like that so that was good but i couldn't do it from in the house and like i said i i really wish i could have gotten this on here now sure i could modify this and probably try to trim down the the plastic around it because you can see there is a little room in there but i shouldn't have to um these guys have been around forever i'm just saying this this kind of sucks so if there's one thing Redivis needs to take from this that they need to look at, fix that. Because that can be a deal breaker for a lot of folks. But overall, not a bad little radio. Um, I'll, like I said, I'll make sure I give this one to Padawans who live relatively close to the repeater so they can make it and don't have to have you know, a longer antenna on there because they may or may not be able to get one that fits. And that's that. So Redivis, I do appreciate y'all... Um, sending this out to me um, like I said you sent to me a couple of them for the Padawan so thank you for that um, very much appreciated and that's that so y'all take care and we hope to see you on the air 7-3